All right. We are here. I got Matt Bird. I got Justin Herrera. I'm Billy True Love. This is podcast 1558. Getting into it right now. It is, I don't know what day. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Man, being off work, the, the day one, I lost train of the entire week. <laughs> right away. <laughs> don't know what day it is anymore. Last week, as soon as we, um, as soon as we dropped episode five, the it was the next morning. Um, Julio Jones did get traded to to Tennessee. That got done. We had just got finished with predictions. I was uh, following the belief that he was going to end up in New England. Justin, I believe you were thinking Seattle. I was on the I was on the train of Seattle. Uh, I mean, by the reports that came out, it was that um, that it was going to be uh, they were offering a first round pick, so they would have had to have taken it. Yeah, and Matt, I can't remember where uh, where you thought he was going to end up. I didn't give an opinion on it. Um, I was thinking Green Bay, kind of. I kind of thought they'd sneak in there in the last minute, but it was the only team that I thought it made the most sense how to kill two birds with one stone and have to sacrifice a first round pick to do it. Uh, It seems like it may would have made sense for green Bay to fix the nonsense with Aaron Rodgers, um, which we will get to. I, uh, I do think Tennessee is good. And as long as Julio can stay healthy, He's going to make Tannehill better, which we have not seen the best of Tannehill. We're still stuck on him in Miami, but that team has been competing ever since they made that decision to bench Mariota and put in Tannehill. That team's been good. Um, So I, I don't want, I think Tannehill is good enough to get the job done with that team, and Julio Jones uh, certainly doesn't make things uh, any harder for that team. Derrick Henry the reigning rushing champ from last year. Uh, Justin, you you worried at all? I'm not going to say worried. I will say that I do love the move for him. Uh, biggest thing, the biggest reason why is, I mean, we've, you know, from our own experiences, like Chiefs fans watching Tennessee play, the second you punch them in the mouth and they're down by double digits, um, they immediately abandon Derrick Henry and they go straight to just throwing the ball. Um, mm-hmm. So if you add that insurance policy, I know Julio Jones is like 32, but like that's a that is only beneficial to them. So I don't think it makes them like immediate Super Bowl contenders. But like yeah, like they're on the radar. Like I would absolutely not want to have to deal with that, especially with the depart departing of Bashad Breeland. So yeah, man, God, I keep for, I just keep forgetting about that. I really, really, really wanted the Chiefs to get that done. I'll stay on track though. I'm with you. I think um, if we're looking at the landscape of the AFC, uh, the AFC South, I think they definitely put some distance between them and Indy. It's it's just them and Indy in that division. And we'll see what Trevor Lawrence does. I, I don't think anyone should expect him to compete for the division this year, but that will come. That, that time will come. It won't be this year. Matt, do you think uh, – that Tennessee does lock down the South. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't even know who Indy has for Carson Wentz to throw the ball to. You got T.Y. Hilton, Hilton back. Um, you got They've got some young dudes that they really do like on that team. So it we may not be taking them serious right now, but we certainly know who Julio Jones is, and I am a humongous fan of A.J. Brown. Um he hasn't touched the surface yet. He's super underrated. And he doesn't come up in the conversations with Devontae Adams and, and all these other guys and whatever. I get it. Tyreek Hill, Devontae, Julio, those are the guys that, that are always getting talked about. But A.J. Brown is up there, and his life may get a lot easier now. Corey Davis isn't taking much attention, which he went on to the, uh, to New York, but that was his counterpart um, past couple seasons and this is a humongous upgrade. And and Justin, to go back to what you were saying, now when you are getting blown out or down two scores, when you do go abandon the run, which they will, um, you're not your offense isn't going to take such a drop off in production. At least it shouldn't now. 
with Julio out there spreading out the uh, a defense with A.J. Brown. That could be huge for them. Yeah, I think you have two potentially top 10 wide receivers on the outsides, and that's terrifying. Uh, again, especially with Bash- Bashad Breeland leaving, that really makes me uncomfortable with this. And to tie it back into the Chiefs, I don't like the fact that we let him go over $2 million. Uh, that's just that's just outright silly. Um, yeah. You've got the cap space. You, I mean, you were wanting to bring in, you know, all sorts of talent. Like you were wanting to bring in the left tackle from San Francisco and you were willing to like get in a bidding war with San Francisco over that. And you're letting your with best, a, ha, a lot of money in that. And you're letting your best cornerback leave for over just $2 million. It's not like he got a multi-year contract. It was a one-year, $4 million deal. Do you think this is, I would hope the answer is yes, that this is because of their confidence in DeAndre Baker and then the acquisition of Mike Hughes for Minnesota. I absolutely hate the thought. If that's if that was their mindset going into it, that's disgusting. The reason being is <laughs> you literally have a first-round cornerback. That's great. That sounds good on paper. The problem is, is why was he let go? Yeah. Yeah. And and now that now yeah. he like what broke like broke his leg or had some sort of injury that took him out of the running to even play. So now we're banking on somebody that we really haven't even seen play in prime time. And you're replace- talking Baker, or you're talking Hughes. Baker. And now and then we add in Baker, Hughes. To yeah. the play- and then Hughes is injury prone. And don't get me wrong, like I hope yeah. it works out. It'll look great if it does. But that's writing a lot. Yeah. You're writing you're depending upon a lot of these guys who have are coming off of injuries to somehow magically be healthy and replace your best uh replace your best quarterback. Well, tell me this then, Matt, and I think um, this is something I'm, I'm hoping to see. I, I, uh, I'm i not going to hold my breath, but the the word is Chandler Jones in Arizona. Not uh, Things not looking good for that relationship. If Chandler Jones is on the trade block and the Chiefs can make that move, you've got to feel much more comfortable with the secondary taking a step back with a premier pass rusher coming. Do you think the Chiefs should entertain that or, or try to get that deal done? Absolutely. And I would give up a first for Chandler Jones. Yeah. Because that's a need. And that's probably, mm-hmm. <clears throat> at this point, our biggest need. I'm less worried about yeah. the secondary than you guys are. Uh, I look for Ward to have another good season. I look for Snead to have yeah. another great season. I think Fenton will probably take a step forward this year. Um, I'm, so I'm less worried about the secondary. But you can certainly help any secondary out with a uh, with a boosted pass rush, and that is what Chandler Jones could give for sure. I I, I don't know what happened with the um, with the Ingram deal. I, he came to town, left, and I don't believe he has signed anywhere. Uh, Melvin Ingram from uh, L.A. So uh, they didn't really try much, and I don't want it to be. Oh, we're going to move Chris Jones. Ugh. It's Robin Peter to pay Paul. You know, I, I don't. I want Chris where Chris belongs, and I want pass rush on the outside at the same time. So, we'll see. Um, yeah, not uh, not getting it done with Bashard Breeland did leave a bad taste in my mouth, and not getting this deal done with Tyron Matthew yet. Now, I know people have said that it's it's kind of the Chiefs' M.O. to get this done closer to training camp as we have with uh, players already on the roster in the past. Try to get right now deals done and get the future deals done uh, taken care of next. So Tyron Matthew deal could be coming. Justin, do you think it's going to happen at all, though? They'd be foolish if they didn't. Um, no, I've got to be honest. Like Maybe I'm being like like very critical of like the front office, but like if you want to consistently compete for Super Bowls, you can't make dumb moves. And letting Bashad Breeland go over $2 million, uh, to me, that's a dumb move. That's dumb. Like, there's – I don't even – like, I'm glad. Like, look, okay, so Legereus had a great rookie year. That's awesome. Now we're relying on other people to take a bigger step because, to me, far and away, Bashad Breeland was our best cornerback uh, on the outside. So, I don't know. I'm getting all over the place, but, like, I think the Tyre- – Yeah, to get no, I got you. To circle the wagon, I think Tyron Matthews is going to get done. Like, that's the leader of your defense. That's the clear leader of your defense to just let them walk. Because on top of that, you have to keep in mind, too, Anthony Hitchens is going to be gone after this year. So, 
Another you're losing. Gone. You're you're talking about losing two of your leaders on defense. Like that would just be silly. So I don't think they're going to make that dumb of a move. Um, I fully anticipate them to announce a contract extension and convert. Could some be of a problem though if if, if Tyron wants to get into that top two, top three paid safeties in the league, and I understand why. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. But how I just don't know that it's that common that you're going to see that type of money go to a player his age. Um, he's not he's not a super young safety. I I can't remember exactly how old Tyron Matthew is, Matt, but I know he's I think he's crossing um, into some some thirty waters. Um, yeah, it's long term now. You get. Give him a four-year deal. Is that? I guess. Um, I like I said, I'm all for it, but I'm just thinking: is that what the Chiefs really want to do long term right now? If he's wanting to be paid like the 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 highest paid safety in football, and um, he's got a ring, he's got two Super Bowl appearances, he was team MVP two years ago. I, he's done everything that, that he could possibly do. Um to ask to then turn around and ask for that money. So hopefully they do get that done. I don't want any, any BS going into the season. That's, that's really, uh, I guess that's really all that's going on right now with the, uh, with the chiefs in the, um, in the Kansas city sports world though, Matt, what is going on with those dudes uh, over at Kaufman? Well, you had uh, Jackson Coar make his debut last night. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Tell me how that went. <laughs> um, I mean, he's young. I think the talent discrepancy between AAA and Major League Baseball is probably a little more difficult than he thought it would be. Um, got the. <laughs> yeah. but we got that was a rough one I, tonight. Yeah, and he's yeah, probably been the I, you know, of those guys so far. I mean, he's one and zero on the season. He has a two twelve ERA. So yeah, um, I, I'd like to see. Uh, I, I think something that, that the Royals need to happen sooner than later is Alberto Mondesi's got to get healthy. We need a good couple of months out of him and then get him the hell out of here. 100%. But he's got to perform, and you got to get him. You've got to trade him off for something fast. Get Bobby Witt Jr. in here. Let him play shortstop. Let him play wherever he wants. But this Mondesi shit is uh, frustrating, to say the least. Um, as good as we know he is, and he just can't get on the damn field for more than ten minutes at a time. Um, I don't know how many teams, even at this point, if if he can, if you can get a healthy couple months, how many teams are going to be that naive <laughs> to give you a haul uh, for Mondesi? I'm not sure. Uh, not sure what you would get there, but yes, uh, Bubik taking the mound tonight uh, against the uh, the Angels. That that'll be. I, I think we could win that game. We'll see what's up. Justin, it was, like I said, don't know what day it is right now. Um, yeah. I watched uh, Trey Young cut the face off the Sixers the other day, and I thought there were some people saying that that wasn't going to happen, that Philly can play defense and and Hawks aren't going to uh, – Hawks ain't going to embarrass them. I get it. It's just one game, but what's going on there? I mean, honestly, like – what Doc Rivers is the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers. What are they known for? Collapsing. I'm like, I'd love to, I'd love to see Atlanta come out of this and Trey Young take them to the Eastern Conference Finals, where they will get absolutely demolished by the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, the Nets are far and away better than absolutely everybody in the rest of the tournament, um, and it's not even close. Okay, they're they're beating the tar off of uh, off of the Bucks right now and consistently. Um, they're kind of this year's Golden State Warriors. Um, like I forget they, they've got Blake Griffin on their team, and like they were gonna have Lamarcus Aldridge until he yes, had, like, yes, until he had like a heart condition. So it's like they were stacked deep. Like Lamarcus Aldridge was like a sixth man. Yeah, like that's crazy. So I don't know. I I'm hoping for anybody but the Clippers out of the West. And like honestly, like I'd love to see uh, the the Hawks come out of the East, but it's going to be the Nets, and I don't think it's going to be close. 
I, I'm with you. I would like to see the Hawks get it done. Um, you know, I'm just going to stick with whoever the long shot is to get it done. That's the team that I want to see make a run until Kansas City has an NBA team, which probably not going to happen. <laughs> uh, and like, so I actually, uh, there was some, uh, somebody I was hanging out with the other day and they were like, I was a guy that I, I work with um, was talking about, like, do you think Kansas City is going to get an NBA team? And like, my response is like an emphatic, like, no, we're not. Um, I want us to. I would get season tickets in a heartbeat. The problem is, is they're probably going to look to do an expansion more than likely by two teams or by four teams. If they do by four teams, yeah, we could. I could see that happening. And I think you're going to do a little bit of a conference realignment if they go by like two teams. You're going to be looking at Seattle's going to get a team and Las Vegas is going to get a team. They will hands down get one before Kansas City. And that's just, yeah. that just is what it is. It sucks, but like. If you were the NBA, you're like, well, am I going to go to Kansas City? Am I going to go to Las Vegas, which has clearly worked out? Or am I going to go back to Seattle, where, like, the Supersonics yeah. have been, like, everyone's been clamoring for the Supersonics since they, like, left, like, to Oklahoma yeah. City. So, um, I wish upon a star, but, like, it makes no difference who yeah. I are. Like, it's the, yeah. we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't getting on, you know? Speaking of um, odd lines to say, um, you had mentioned someone playing with someone else's food last week when we talked, and then I got to see some of that Mayweather-Paul fight, uh, a lot of the hugging at least. Um, what did you think of that fight, or how much of that performance did you get to see, if any? I think it was 50 bucks running on Showtime. I did not get that. Got the like I had a couple of uh, had a couple of friends over. Uh, of course, I like millions of people that paid for that fight. Uh, uploaded the Showtime application right when the the, the event was going to go live. Applications crashed. Missed. Oh, I was seeing that. Missed Ocho Cinco's fight. Um, <laughs> didn't care for the two like middle cards because like the, it yeah. just um, like Badu Jack I think is like thirty six. So like okay, you're like on that back end of like the career. Like I'm not all that interested. But uh, I did get a chance to watch Mayweather versus Paul. And um, if, you know, it's it was an exhibition fight. And honestly, if you were looking at like, hey, we needed somebody to just beat one of the Paul brothers, like kid YouTube up to. Yeah. To, to just establish like boxing is like a leg- like a legitimate sport and a, a good place. You walked away from that fight disappointed. It just looked terrible. So you weren't impressed with all with the fact that Paul made it to the end. Oh, I, I was impressed that he made it. Like I, the one thing I said right because I predicted that he was going to get knocked out in round five. Um, the big thing for me though was like, okay, once we got to round four, like it was or round three, he was clearly gassed. I was like, if that guy makes it the distance, you get the respect, you get the hand claps. Like it's yes, absolutely. Um, but like Floyd was clearly forty four. You know? Yeah. And clearly, you know, 18 years older and uh, 35 pounds lighter. But, like, he was still on leaps and bounds like a better boxer. Like, he was toying with his food. and But, like, also, I don't think he was capable of knocking him out either. Like, I think it was just, eh, it was an old It was an old man boxing, you know, boxing a kid. And yeah. um, while he was clearly, like, a better fighter, it just... It was blah. Like, will I pay for another like event like that? Uh, maybe just because I'm dumb, but like, <laughs> yeah, no, I gotcha. Yeah. I'm right there with you on that. Um, I want to, I want to go back to a conversation we were having just a little bit ago, talking uh, Tennessee. And I believe I saw you and someone getting into it on Twitter over uh, Patrick Mahomes and Ryan Tannehill. Uh, <laughs> Here's the thing, like everyone's like, oh my god, no, Ryan Tannehill has these great numbers. Okay, dude, seriously, like I just highlighted on that point earlier when we were talking about the second you punch Tennessee in the mouth, they abandon all and it's just garbage yards and like that just is what it is. They're not like a dominant throwing team. They're not. Yeah. Like the and also you play in the tr- most trash division. You get six freebies every single like year. And that's fine. Like, Rand Tannehill's a good quarterback. I don't think he's yeah. a bad quarterback by any means whatsoever. But, like, if you're going to sit there 
And you're going to tell me that you think if you were starting a franchise, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take Ryan Tannehill over Patrick Mahomes. I would walk away from that conversation and not respond. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, I, would just I, I, I saw the comparison stat line. I think it went um, yards, touchdowns, pers- uh, QBR over their uh, what uh, this whole comparison really got out ahead of um, is a CBS uh, writer that put this out. The uh, actual stat line that NFL had put up shows it was the comparison of their first or their uh, the last twenty four games or their their first twenty four starts or something like that. I can't remember, but that that time frame uh, did sort of change that. And Pat did have him almost beat by a thousand yards in that comparison, 900 and some change. Um, I'm, I'm with you, but I, I do say, you know, Tennessee fans, I am with you. Get excited about your team. You do have someone that can keep the car on the road. Um, Absolutely. And he does, I, I think he can do a very good job at it. I will, if, if I had to take this Chiefs roster and you got to give me Alex Smith or Ryan Tannehill. I am going Tannehill. I think he is a superior version of Alex Smith, who, which can win a lot of games. Absolutely. And I think, again, I, I, it's not like I'm saying Tennessee fans don't think you have any hope of like beating the Chiefs or anything like that. You can absolutely beat the Chiefs. It's just... It's kind of like what we would always view going into the playoffs. You know, we'd get to the playoffs with Alex Smith. And what's the one thing you would look at? Do you have an advantage or a disadvantage at the quarterback position? That's the most important position in all of football. If you're if you have the better quarterback, you're more likely going to win. Yeah, I'm never in any circumstances whatsoever going to say, yes, give me Ryan Tannehill over Patrick Mahomes. And not even just being like a homer. Like, I mean, like, yeah, like, okay, cool. I'm from Kansas City. Duh, I'd take him over. But, but like, I can't see somebody, like, in the Miami Dolphins organization who also had Ryan Tannehill. But, like, some franchise, like, hey, we can choose one of these guys. Let's just insert him into our offense and go. Who's What team is going to take Tannehill over Mahomes? Yeah. And sticking to the quarterback, uh, Matt, we got any updates? Does anyone have any update on? I saw uh, – Aaron Rodgers didn't report to mandatory OTAs. I believe it started today. Uh, is this going to get ugly, Matt, or is this really nothing? Is there nothing to see here? Nothing to see. I mean, more, or at least it's not going to get more ugly than it already is. I mean, I don't see him showing up. I don't see Green Bay trading him. I don't think he's going to play at all this year. Hmm. You know, and I, I saw an interesting um, article out of Pro Football Talk. Very encouraging article to push him to retire. To you know, just going down the difference in money he'll save if he retires and then comes back prior to training camp versus holding out. It'll cost him a couple million dollars extra. Um, as good as a de- uh, teammate Devonte Adams has been supporting. Aaron Rodgers, he has said he uh, does not play that game <laughs> and that uh, he signed up for a job. This is what they're paying him to do. And um, he is going into – this is a contract year for Devontae Adams, and um, he says he's not, not interested in an extension. That's a huge um, receiver to hit the market if he does next year, and Aaron Rodgers is somewhere else. Um, or is or is on his way someone else and can steer Devontae to come with him. That could be dangerous if it were to end up being somewhere like Las Vegas, which I think um, I would be more worried about Las Vegas if they got Rodgers and Adams. If it's just Rodgers with that team, I could really give a shit because that, that team is very bad. Um, and Aaron Rodgers can only do what he can. But if he takes Devontae Adams and they do a few other things, um, that that would be formidable, I suppose. Yeah. Do I mean, here's – I feel like Green Bay has been very fortunate the past, what, 30 years? You know, they, they, they literally went very. from from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. And, like, 
you're you're pissing off your quarterbacks at the tail ends of their career, right? Like again, if you've got Aaron Rodgers, I don't care what philosophy you think you have, and our, our fans are the own. no. Like you give that quarterback absolutely everything he needs. He just won what NFL MVP. Like he still got it. So like. Give and, that man whatever the hell it is that he wants so he can go out there and win the games because he's the one that's doing it. It's plain and simple. And if they're not going to mm-hmm. do it, I think he's stubborn enough to where exactly like Matt said, he'll just sit and he'll be fine with it. He's got the, the yeah. what's that what's that movie that girl's in? The, the, the Something in Our Stars or whatever. Nicholas Sparks <laughs> book or something. But like, yeah, what? like he's got the, he's got like, he's got his girl. Like he's happy. He's going on vacation. Oh. Like he's hosting Jeopardy. Like he'll be so fine. Sticking to that, because this is where I think pro football talk is a little, uh, maybe I, I want to say a little out of touch and maybe I'm wrong, you know, Justin, you and I are the old guys in the conversation right now. Matt's the young one. If Aaron re- if Aaron retires, I think it's easier said than done that a guy his age unplugs for a season and isn't having to do some things and just stays really wanting to play it all with his, as you mentioned, his young girlfriend, the life he's running, all these things. It's not like he's just going to sit around and, and get in his feelings and want to go back. He's going to get uninterested. And um, football requires a ton of attention to play at the, at the level he does. I don't think he can just unplug and plug back in at this age. But maybe maybe I'm wrong. I'm definitely no um, elite athlete like uh, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is. <laughs> I don't know, what do you think, Matt? Like, I know you were saying that he thinks he just sits for the season. Like, do you think he sits and comes back? Do you think he just sits or just retires? I think he's done. I mean, I think he'll love not – What? I think he'll love the not football life. He'll love not having to go to practice. He'll love not yeah. having to answer to anybody. I think he's really going to take to that lifestyle. Man, that is just – if I'm a Packers fan – uh, and go pack go people listen i i would have had to say when the brett far fire finally went out i would have said god damn it team please don't do this to me again that why did we just send the greatest player maybe the greatest player to ever suit up for us he just went out with a bad taste in his mouth had to go to you know the next door neighbor bully house that we don't like in minnesota and come fuck with us and you're doing the same thing again. Most teams don't go consecutive all, all-time great quarterbacks like that. You usually go to the basement for a while, and then you rise back like the Phoenix. They just have had it and and just don't give a fuck, apparently. It's, it's very, very sloppy, and uh, like Alex Smith said, I, it just they're doing it wrong in Green Bay. Well, think about it this like, like like this too. It's the ultimate middle finger from Aaron Rodgers if he's like, guess what? I retired because y'all wouldn't do things right on the same year that I won NFL MVP. God, it's like, what? oh yeah, I, I was good enough. <sighs> That's on you. Like he it walked is... out looking like the knight in shining armor, and they were just like, now nah, we don't need your help. Uh, go go back to your castle. But the problem, like where I just get so lost in this thing, trying to think front office over there at Lambeau, when you drafted Jordan Love, it had to be in your head, man, if Aaron Rodgers can play lights out this season and we can get whatever we want in a trade, that would be a pretty awesome scenario. And then it happened. And here he is, MVP, things aren't right. You can get him off the team in a heartbeat if you want him gone and you can get a King's ransom for him. You're just proving to everyone and you're go ahead and showing your cards. You don't have any idea yet. If Jordan love can be that guy, you just don't know yet, which isn't a good sign. I don't think it takes this. This isn't baseball. You know, this isn't going to take years and years and years in a minor league to figure out if this guy can play you. You find these things out very quick playing quarterback in the NFL. There aren't 32 men in the world that can play elite number one quarterback football 
on the planet. Not there. There's 32 teams, but there's not 32 dudes that can play. And there's there's a couple of guys that can play at the level that Aaron Rodgers plays at. And they have, God, just gotten everything a front office could want in terms of leverage in a conversation like that, and having the you know the the reward that anyone is going to want to come to the table for. And you just shit the bed twice. <laughs> It's insane. I uh, I don't I don't know where else to go there with with the Packers. That's very irritating. It's a little bit slow right now. I think as um, you know, like all, as, as like training camp starts up and all of that stuff, uh, we're gonna start to see more news kind of come out. Like I think that's when you're gonna probably see the Tyron Matthew extension. Because again, I think it would be foolish to let him go. Pay that man his money. I understand that the the roster is a little top heavy, but like if you trust in Veach, you know he's going to go ahead and make quality draft picks. We'll see what happens with this year's draft class. I've got high hopes. We've got a center for the next fifteen years, um, ten to fifteen years. Let's just go optimistic there. But you know, you've got yeah, you've got uh, presumably that kind of headhunter linebacker. Uh, that's going to be like at the center of your defense. It's going to, you know, shoot the gaps and, and cut plays off. Um, and then maybe you've got a diamond in the rough and like Cornell Powell, you know, or maybe yes, you have that man. extra weapon uh, yeah. with Noah Gray. And, you know, trust- and, and seeing this team with its absolute best opportunity to function with Patrick Mahomes and a elite run game. I really do think the run game on this team is going to be a difference maker. It's going to be a career extender for Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Um, I, I think that I really think that's going to be the thing that the league is talking about come week four or five, that this is a different type of chiefs team. We know what we can do on third and a hundred, but now we're just choking clock, running the ball. Got a couple of dudes back there that can do it. May even bring in another one. We don't know it. Like you said, until week one gets here, it is always Veach season. And um, he he could come up at any moment with with that, uh, that game changer. Maybe it's on the defensive side of the ball, but maybe it's on the offensive side of the ball as well. Personally, I think that's exact. Like what you just hammered on is going to be the exact thing that's going to happen. I think that's what the league is going to notice. Like we know, Patrick Mahomes can sling it to Kelsey or sling it to Hill. Like that's that's obvious. But like, what happens when you're in like the third quarter and the Chiefs are up by like 17, and now they're just running it with Clyde edwards helaire and Jarek McKinnon, mm-hmm. and Daryl Williams for that matter. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they can close it out because that offensive line can push and they're winning the battle up front. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, how the hell do you come back from that when they're just, you know, consistently because yeah, three, five, four to five yards of carry. And we no. will stop seeing people. Defenses will not be able to send three and four up front anymore. The, the days of dropping everyone on your team but three guys is over. You could try it all you want, but then we're going to get 7-8 a clip with Clyde Edward, Tolaire, or anyone touching the ball for that matter um, because that line is going to definitely win when we are ahead of the numbers there, which we will be most of the time with that offensive line. Well, all right, guys, uh, that's it for this week. We will, uh, if there's any breaking news, we will uh, we will jump in when we can. I'm Billy True Love. I got Matt Bird and Justin Herrera. We are out. Peace. See you.